Attention, Austin guitar players and bass players. Are you in need of setup or repair on your axe? Well, I have the guy for you, gang. That's Jason Swedberg over at J. Scott Luthery, and you can find him at J. Scott Luthery on Instagram. Now, if you listen to the show, you know I've been talking about Jason for years. Why is that? Because I've been taking my guitars to Jason for over 20 years. Not only does he do the best job, but he has the best prices and the fastest service in town. Again, find him at J. Scott Luthery on Instagram. Not only is he doing an amazing job, repairing and setting up guitars he is now building guitars that's right he built me an sg junior which i have and it sounds amazing it feels great it's it's the very first sg junior he ever built i've got a j scott luthery sg junior you can go see him at uh, j scott luthery on instagram get a guitar built get your guitars fixed get them set up it's time man they've been hanging on the wall all through COVID. now it's time to get them out get them fixed and get out there and play J. Scott Luthery on Instagram. Let's get down. And you may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? It's time for How Did I Get Here? Hello, I'm Johnny. I'm your host. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys all had a good weekend, whatever it is you did this weekend. I'm actually doing this intro on Saturday uh, because I am leaving to Vegas on Sunday and I didn't want to schlep this stuff down there, try and do all this stuff on Monday when I'm doing my, uh, my gig with Skyrocket there for Visit Austin. But anyway... Yes, I'm going to Vegas, so I'm doing this on Saturday. I'm actually playing a gig with Skyrocket tonight, and I just came back from Soundcheck. We have like four hours between Soundcheck and the gig. So I came home, do some stuff with Rosie, do this podcast intro, make a little dinner, and do my thing, man. So uh, anyway, I hope you did have a good weekend. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying healthy. It is crazy out there, man. This stuff, this uh, this coronavirus is, is making a comeback with this Omicron like nobody's business, man. It has taken over. So stay safe, wear a mask, make sure you're vaccinated, make sure you're boosted. You know, it's not going to stop you from getting the thing. We all know that. I was vaccinated when I got COVID, but, you know, it's going to lessen the uh, effect of it. So hopefully you'll get through it real fast and feel much better. Gang, I've been talking about Guayaquil Organic Yerba Mate now for a little while because they're sponsoring the show. Fabulous people over there at Guayaquil Organic Yerba Mate. You know it. It's in the yellow cans with all the other energy drinks at your favorite little store that you go and get your energy drinks. Uh, but let me tell you a little bit about a Guayaquil Organic Yerba Mate and how it's different than those energy drinks. It doesn't have a, a shitload of caffeine that gets you and gets you jacked up to the point where you're sweating and freaking out and having a heart attack. And then you crash. You got to take a nap. This stuff is like a very nice. It's old school it's from Argentina. This is where they invented this stuff. And it just keeps you going throughout the day. It gives you enough energy and a boost to get going, but you don't. You have no crash. Today, I'm going to be trying the Lemon Elation, which comes in a 16-ounce can and only has 100 calories. Absolutely. Uh, let's see what it's about over here, right? Let's check this one out. Ah, there we go. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's nice. That's a nice, smooth, tangy Lemon Elation. Gang, they have all kinds of flavors. Craig and the gang at Guayaki uh, Organic Yerba Mate were nice enough to bring me five cases and tasting all the different ones and telling you guys about it is a very exciting thing for me. I love this stuff. Find it wherever it is you get your energy drinks. It's in a yellow can. Guayaki Organic Yerba Mate. Try this Yemen Lemon Elation. It's absolutely delicious. Gang, I have a great show for you. Two of my favorite people slash two of my favorite musicians slash two of my favorite singers slash two of my favorite songwriters are on the show today and they're related. Bonnie and Eleanor Whitmore, the Whitmore sisters, are my guests on the show today. Now they have their debut LP dropping uh, in a couple weeks, January 21st. It's called Ghost Stories and it's gorgeous. They got some singles out, Ballad of Sissy and, Par- and Porter, Learn to Fly, All of these great songs, some of these great singles are available now wherever it is that you stream and download your jams. But you can pre-order or pre-save Ghost Stories now uh, wherever it is that you get your music. And it drops on January 21st. You can find them at the WhitmoreSisters.com. Now, um, I've known Bonnie 
and Eleanor for a few years. I actually met Eleanor and her husband, Chris Masterson, first. They have the band, The Mastersons. And um, they came on the show. And, and at one point, Eleanor was like, oh, you should really meet my sister. You guys would get along. So then I met Bonnie a few years ago, became great friends, fast friends. She's a fantastic person. They're both great, great people. And I'm really lucky I got to sit down and talk with them in person. They were doing shows with the Jayhawks at 310 a couple months ago. And they stopped by and uh, one morning before I had to leave town and they had to go play shows uh, or play another show. And we, and we sat down and had this great conversation because they, I mean, obviously they're sisters. They've been singing for years. Their parents sing. Their mom's an opera singer. Their dad's a folk singer. And... Um, They grew up all singing together as a family. If you know this, if you live in Austin, you're familiar with them and you're like, all right, Johnny, we already know this. But there are people that listen to this show that might not know. Anyway, they grew up playing music. They're fantastic musicians. They have beautiful, beautiful harmonies. And this record is kind of based on all of their, like, the way that they sing together, you know? Gorgeous, gorgeous songs. Get out there and check it out. Uh, Check out The Ballad of Sissy and Porter, available now. Learn to Fly is available now. And I think that there's... And a third single out. I might be wrong, but if I'm if I'm not wrong, you'll find it and you'll be really happy. Find them at the at the WhitmoreSisters.com. I cannot say enough about these two women. They're phenomenally talented, super cool. I always have a great time talking to both of them on the show and when I see them out. Actually, I Bonnie I ended up playing a show with Bonnie after we did this show at the Continental Club. And then Bonnie came over the next week and I made some chicken tikka masala and we had a great dinner and hung out and Played with Rosie and went for a walk with Rosie. Fantastic people, the Whitmore Sisters. Get out there and check out uh, Ghost Stories. It drops on January 21st. Go to the WhitmoreSisters.com. Check out their singles available now, The Ballads of Ballad of Sissy and Porter, and Learn to Fly, and I think another single. I don't know why I didn't know that. Anyway, fantastic songwriters, fantastic singers, fantastic musicians coming together as family. No, no one sings like 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 family. You know what I mean? Like the Bee Gees sound like they do because they sing together like that. The Jacksons, all these people that just sing, the Everly Brothers, all these people that have these beautiful, beautiful harmonies that are just kind of instilled in them at birth in their DNA. Also, there's that single Learn to Fly. And I did like knowing the Whitmore sisters for so long, I didn't realize their dad was like a, a licensed pilot. And, uh, and, and part of the thing of being a Whitmore is you got to learn to play an instrument And you got to learn to fly. So they both have their pilot's licenses and they fly wherever. What? What is going on here? They got to fly me to the moon. Anyway, look, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to let you listen to my great conversation with these two amazingly talented and fantastically cool women. This is Bonnie and Eleanor, Eleanor Whitmore, the Whitmore sisters. Let's get down. She's like stranger danger. It was weird. <laughs> I haven't seen her do that yet. Yeah. But now she's laying with you guys. Yep. She's like, I'm their dog now. <laughs> I'm gonna be leaving. Are you? You guys are still living in California, you and Chris, yeah. Eleanor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not mm-hmm. home much. No, I. Uh, it's been a weird year for all of this, like getting back to what we used to do. Yeah, and we kind of just jumped right back on the hamster wheel. You did. Yeah, just straight into gigs. And as soon as we got vaccinated, we, like, called our agent. And Steve had already canceled June, so she filled June. And then, so... And that June was that wonderful period where everybody like, thought right. it was going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. I was and there. Things was were going to go back to normal. <laughs> and then July came around. And, and then we were out. Everything went to July shit. July and August in Texas and Florida with Steve. Um, with the Delta variant, had a breakthrough with the pedal steel player, Ricky. Oh, Ricky. Had to, had to just leave him behind. <laughs> We're just like, see you later, Ricky, bud. Ricky got it. <laughs> you know, Ricky as from the song, Ricky. We, we, uh, we left him in Fort Lauderdale. and um, What did his name become again? Uh, what did we call him? It was like. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was. COVID Dick, Ricky, like Typhoid D- Mary. Dick. Uh, 
in the branch branch the Covidian. ranch Covidian. but it was but it <laughs> was what was dick something oh dick lauderdale dick and the, lauderdale yeah. and the, the ranch covidians was his uh code <laughs> name after that um yeah so the they song ricky is, is yeah so uh, it's about that ricky he really he, yes he has yeah. he has a co-write on it and he still hasn't listened he to won't listen to it <laughs> scared he's yeah he's scared he's, he's, i mean he's, it's an intervention song we're like totally just nailing yeah. him yeah Johnny Berg even gets like a side slap from us. <laughs> Shout fun. out. Um, did you guys, you, you, there are songs on here, like I know you wrote one at House of Songs, but this whole record, which by the way is great, Ghost Stories. Are we recording now? Yep. Oh, shit. I've been okay. recording My for bad. a while. <laughs> <laughs> He's just sneaky. <laughs> you know, when Ricky, when Ricky was on the show and after he left, I was like, well, what, do you want, what music do you want me to play? And he goes, moving in stereo by the cars <laughs> and he was like, well, it's not even your it's song, even your song. <laughs> he's like it's my song <laughs> he <left>. that's hilarious <laughs> yeah it's about right <laughs> um so uh, these these you went bonnie you went to california for a little time yeah. out of texas during the well the, the idea lockdown. the idea was to you know like i haven't been stationary for that long in a really long time. So I was getting really antsy. And yeah. I was like, the idea of coming out to LA and like actually experience LA kind of was a thought, you know, have a vacation even. And um, join our pod during the quarantine. Mm -hmm. And Masterson was very much like, no, no. If you're coming out here, we're going to work. We're going to make a record. And it's a good <laughs> thing because, I mean, we've been talking about making this record for, you know, a long time. Your whole life? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, much. but just never had the time to do it. And Chris was like, you guys should do it. And we were like, oh, good idea. <laughs> He's smart, that one. So you just did it there in your house? Um, yeah, basically, Bonnie was like, coming in a couple weeks. So we just got on Zoom and started working on songs. And like she had a few started and I had a few started. And um, we just, you know, worked on some stuff. And she came out and we tracked about eight songs, just like acoustic guitar and vocals. And then... Um, she came back for a second trip and we finished the rest of the songs and then went into the studio with um, a drummer and then Bonnie tracked the bass uh, um, live with the drummer. So at least even though we had to do the recording process backwards, it still had a lot of um, liveliness to it because yeah. we were, you know, singing at the same time a lot of uh, when we were tracking the acoustics and, and the vocals and stuff. So still tried to keep some of that going. Did you, am I mistaken, did you guys work with Angel again? Yes, we a little did. Bit? Yeah, I talked to her the other day and she mentioned that. She just texted me this morning and says hi. <laughs> ah, I love her. <laughs> She's great. She is great. She's, She's moderating a panel today, right? Oh, yeah. With like Susan Rogers and Lenise uh, Bent and all these like legends of the board. Yeah, I think she, Angel is such a rock star. Um, you know, she... Uh, we, I guess we met her, I met her through a friend in LA. I actually didn't know her from my days in Austin mm -hmm. and, um, met her out in LA and then we, uh, ended up working with her on our, uh, latest Masterson's record, No Time for Love right. Songs. And then, um, brought her in again to help us with the Wentworth sisters and, um, and she even helped us, uh, with a video for Learn to Fly. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So, um, she's, uh. She's so multi-talented. She is. Um, yeah, she, like, I, I just happened to get together with her, and and, she, and I was like, yeah, Bonnie's coming into town. We're going to work on this video, and it's going to be really crappy. And she was like, well, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> and, like, you know, just, like, organize, like, wrote a treatment and, like, organize everything in two days, and um, it came out, like, way better than my wildest dream so she's amazing yeah she i don't amazing. think either one of us have ever looked that good on video before yeah so and then the golden light and we were out in the desert and it was just perfect oh you went out to where she was uh -huh. oh nice yeah it, was, it turned out really beautiful so we literally shot in her backyard pretty much nice <laughs> i remember i would do these acoustic shows with her in the early 2000s and she was really young but i remember one time like Starting to get mad, but then realizing like, oh, she's like on another level musically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She started tuning my guitar while I was playing a song. <laughs> she's just like, that sounds like I me. Can't. <laughs> I was like, what? And then I was like, oh, you can do that? Like, wow. I didn't Impressive. even know it was out of tune while I was yeah. playing it. Love it. 
She's really good at fixing those. Yeah. Things. So that's like. So, okay, for, um, let me ask you this other thing because you brought up Learn to Fly. You guys are pilots. It's yes. True. I never knew that. It's like a family of pilots, and you gotta you gotta play an instrument and fly a plane. Mm -hmm. your fan. I didn't even know that about the flying. It's like the definition of a Whitmore. Yeah, basically. and harmonies. You have to sing harmonies and fly a plane and play an instrument. No big deal. So how old were you when you learned how to fly? Um, I soloed when I was 16, got my license when I was 17. Wow. And um, yeah. I took a little bit longer. I basically realized that um, I was not going to be giving any grandbabies. And so oh. that was my way of being like, all right, you know what? I'll finally get this done and make my dad happy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's the written test thing that I just hated doing. Yeah, <clears throat> the flying part is easy. I think all the uh, studying about like the weather and and stuff is the hard part. It's the radio. I hate the radio. Talking on the radio. I hate talking on the radio. Okay. Why? Is that confusing? Is it hard? Is it weird? I think when you're dyslexic, it's a which little... Which I am. Uh, <laughs> it's a problem when you're trying to tell somebody where you're entering which from the direction? pattern and which direction. Oh, if you're yeah, a little yeah, bit funky yeah. in the head. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. I, I like to fly in, in, in desolate areas where there There's isn't no a lot of traffic. <laughs> okay. And you can, can you just go rent planes to fly? Well, we don't well, have to because okay. Dad yeah. has, has a plane. so many planes. He has a collection, so to speak. Oh, yeah. Um, we and we've always had a collection of mostly antique airplanes. Yeah, like Bonnie and I uh, like to fly this uh, Piper Cub, PA-11 Cub, and then um, he's got a Luscombe and a Cessna 180 and a lots of And a little, Pete and Paul. <laughs> yeah, lots, of, lots of airplanes that you've never heard of. Yes. They're all really small. Where, you have are to they look like in a, a hangar at one yeah. of those private airports? Yeah, he's uh, got a hangar uh, down in Terlingua where they live. That's uh, awesome. Texas. Yeah. Well, most of them there, some of, a couple of them are in Kingsland too. So. Can I ask you guys a question about this thing? Because I've always wondered this. If you have a pilot's license and like say the, the pilot and co-pilot and whoever else is in there eats some bad fish. And they go down. Just like and the someone's like, plane. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're like, Does anyone here know how to fly a plane? Are you authorized to like be Yeah, man. No, no we're uh, not, no, authorized. not authorized. We just have our single engine land. Oh, okay. A private okay. pilot. Right, right. Um, like so like I'm not even rated to fly um an airplane with more than one engine. So yeah, <laughs> okay. you also have to you have to get checked out in the airplane that you're classified for. Okay. So like even and if we have forty seven <laughs> Right. That's not one, not one of them. But, but you also like, you know, you go, you have to go every year or so. And like, if you haven't flown and make sure that you can still, you know, do your landings essentially before you can take anybody up in the plane or have, have, have access to the plane. They have like autopilot now. Like those planes can right. basically land themselves. Land themselves. Right. Um, and you can tell because sometimes the landings are pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> I've noticed that over the last like five or six years, but not a, I, man, I flew once since the pandemic was over mm -hmm. in October. It was really terrible. Mm -hmm. Everything about it is terrible Everything now. Everything about traveling these days kind of sucks. <laughs> well, Which, we were talking about the the um, th the problem with the Boeing's. The, the trim was going off, and like uh, they had a couple of plane crashes because of it. Mm -hmm. um, but it was not U.S. pilots or whatever, because apparently that was something. But it's just so weird that because things are so automated in those planes especially it's like when something goes wrong they don't know how to respond to it unless you have the proper training or have that going into it younger pilots don't really have that and most pilots at least that were commercial um back in the day were coming from the military only they didn't hire right. privatized pilots okay and your dad was military yeah, yeah he was and in then the Navy. also a a of commercial pilot. Retired Delta, yeah. Oh, nice. His music actually got him his job, though, in Delta. That's what? why I thought it was really interesting. He he had performed um, on a talent show uh, on, on one of the ships in the Skipper. Um, it, he kind of made a joke about the, the boat and the Skipper and the thing, and this, he thought it was funny. And so they had, um, had a hiring freeze for Delta, and... Um, so he had signed on to like do another tour tour and right in the middle, he's like on the boat and they're like opened it back up and he got called in to, for, to try to get the job at Delta. And like he had to get permission to leave the boat and he didn't go to his superior officer like he was supposed to. He went to the skipper oh. and the skipper's like, yeah, go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Did he end up getting in trouble? No, no. He, he just got out Ended of the up Navy. flying for Delta. He, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
That's amazing. It is. What an odd sort of like side story to you guys. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't seem odd to you because you grew up that way. Totally. I, I think our, our childhood is just really strange. Like I like come to school and people be like, what'd you guys do on the weekend? And I'm like, well, we played a bar with my dad and <laughs> or we, we flew, you know, across the state and went visiting some relatives. <laughs> Did this stuff come naturally to you guys or like how was your I mean, your dad was like a military guy. He never like, you know, yelled at you guys or like. <laughs> Um, he had like basically our parents had their own agenda like they weren't helicopter parents at all and so it was more of like we were just attached to them and like they were like we're gonna go do this and we're like there's no objecting to it you know it's like like, get in the plane here's an example my parents (laughs) took me to the Grand Canyon when I was five and my mom like trained me for weeks and was like you're gonna carry your own backpack I don't want to hear you complain (laughs) if you complain on this trip we're never taking you anywhere again And so, like, I hiked in and out of the Grand Canyon when I was five, and the night before we left, I stubbed my toe and, like, basically ripped my toenail off, and I had my shoes on in the morning, and I was hiking out of the canyon, and I finally got the courage to, like, approach my mom and say, Mom, my foot really hurts, (laughs) and she said that she took off my shoe, and it was just gnarly, and she said her heart was just, like, in her throat, and, and she was like... It's not that bad. And just <laughs> just put your shoes back on. <laughs> that, that kind of parenting isn't around anymore. No. no. I had the, I had the, what are you crying for? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You <laughs> shut up or I'll give you I'll something give, to cry exactly. about. Like, it's just like, whoa, seriously? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that was just normal. Yeah. yeah. But I think my, our mom is probably a little more militant than, than our dad. Well, her favorite sayings growing up was, you know, if the mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy and yeah. don't make the mommy mad. And Elmer and I didn't get along all that often. So like we knew that we couldn't get to a certain point because if mom got involved, it was not going to be fun. Like, True. so we would have these arguments and there'd be something that would like cause a noise or whatever. I'm like, what are you doing? And we would just be like, done. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> done. To our quarters. Kept you. <laughs> it's not involved. Mom. Don't when, get mom in it. <laughs> was music a place where you guys didn't fight or was there more fighting in oh, the music? More fighting. More fighting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, it's, I think I'm probably the most uh, difficult person in the well, family you've to always, work with. You've always been a pitch bitch, so yeah, that's been I, part of I'm it. I'm the pitch bitch. <laughs> so. I understand that. I mean, that, that's what you have the ability to play violin yeah, and sing. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just like, you yeah. know, like, no, that's not your part. This is your part. <laughs> that would be scary with to be bow. in a band with you. I'm with, so sloppy like with that. With gesturing with the bow all the time. No, you fix that. But you, also, like, because of that, though, I think that Eleanor helped us become a lot better. Aww, thanks. <laughs> the whole band, even yes, the parents. Including my, including my dad, yes. So uh, they would, uh, was your dad, like, flying and also playing gigs and stuff on his days off? Um, Is yeah. That, yeah. Okay. And where did you guys, like, where would you guys go play? Oh, we played Cozy Oaks in, in Denton. Denton. It was like a little uh, restaurant bar kind of a thing and, and there's um we cappuccino had... cafe was the coffee oh, house I forgot about that one um, and then my uh, first gig though was in terlingua which was at la kiva yes underneath the penisaurus erectus which is a, a fake uh looking fake. cyber-tooth tiger oh thing but that was the plaque that right, was right. underneath <laughs> <laughs> you know really highbrow <laughs> gigs <laughs> No, your face is so priceless. You're just like, oh god. She's always like, why is she talking about this? Because you're uh, you laugh at wiener jokes. I will always. Yeah. I'm, I'm a 12 year old boy. Me too. It's terrible. <laughs> it's tough when you're like in an adult situation with like grown ups at like a. I don't like know rich how to people adult. or like bank people. Yeah, I don't know how to handle it. Handle it. Yeah. I went to the DMV the other day, and it was like I just like felt like. I even told the lady, I'm like, I don't know how to adult. And she's like, you're doing okay. Like, <laughs> you're going to be all right. <laughs> I also like that people like us consider like getting an oil change adulting. Yes. yes. Or like going to the, <laughs> hey, I've got my driver's license renewed. I'm a real grown up. <laughs> like, I'm that's a grown just up. expected of you. <laughs> Where's my gold star? <laughs> Do you have that? Are you, are you? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely when you're a creative brain. Um, yeah. It's those things that you need to do for your car and life are not necessarily at the top of the brain (laughs) there was there was some podcast i was listening to and a guy said uh you can tell how long someone's been in show business when you ask them to fill out a form that regular people fill out Mm -hmm. (laughs) and they just go like 
What is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess we don't ever fill out Someone forms. Help me. I'm yeah. not allowed to fill out forms or post anything without it being edited first. On behalf of the Whitmore sisters, yeah. or just on your well, own, just in my even own. herself. Like when she is every week, she does a newsletter, and and I have to somebody has to proofread it because there it's, are always it's problems. always problems. <laughs> There's always issues. What are the issues? Well, first, the Come first there. one she ever sent me to proof, it was like newsletter with like eight exclamation <laughs> points, and then like all these things were in all caps, and <laughs> and 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 then she was like, I have three things to tell you first up which is like a sports term and then there was never any like second up or a third and so i was like if you're gonna say there's three things you have to like talk about the three things you can't just be like there's three things and i'm only going to talk about one this is why people get so upset like why does it always take you so long to reply on an email and it's like you don't understand how long it takes me to write things out and actually have it make sense like I'm doing this for everyone else's benefit. <laughs> were, did you go to the same schools that Eleanor went to, like high school? Like when you got no, there, were people actually. expecting a lot of you and then you were, because that. <laughs> no, because the weird thing was, so we we grew up in Denton mostly, it was right. me, but we also lived in Justin previous to that, um, which is not very far from Denton by any means, but um when I so I went to a different elementary school than her, and then I got redistricted, so I went to a different junior high and high school as well. Okay. Well, technically, it was the same high school, but it's, that's confusing. Because you did really well in school. I did. She yeah. she was the overachiever. She was like the like this is the perfect child. I was sort of like I don't even know. Did like, they, they ever were say like, oh. the things to you like uh, you, you should really be doing a lot better than this man? <laughs> I well. Here's the thing. I, the little caveat is that like when I was about two years old, I, I spent almost a year in and out of the hospital with pneumonia. So I think the the fact that I like almost died made it to where like, oh, you're at least alive. Right, you know, right, like right, the expectations right. for me went really low <laughs> yeah, at the very beginning. And like they even tried to start me out on the violin. And yeah. like this one already had, you know, a few years advance on me. And I was like, oh, hell no, I'm not playing that thing. I used to flip it around and play it like this, like a cello. <laughs> I finally got it but yeah no i i like eleanor was like the gold star of everything it was like of expectations and so on and so forth and it was just kind of like well she already did it perfect so i have to do something else that was always kind of my thing it's like i didn't want to do the same thing or try to be as good because i didn't actually think i could be <laughs> yeah. you can go your own way i can go my own way yeah you can call it another lonely day. That's right. That's true. Um, sorry. I don't know what well, I almost you. sang it. But. You did? Okay, yeah. good. Um, when you came on, okay, the, the one thing I wanted to acknowledge way before, because I was excited to have both of you on together, because you've both been on, and you're your own people, mm -hmm. and I know you guys apart. I've only been around the two of you together a couple of times, but I'm fascinated First of all, do you ever do anything musically with people you're not like really intimately <laughs> like involved with? Uh, yeah. Outside of like Steve Earle? Uh, like, yeah. Um, okay. I mean, not not so much these days. Um, you know, it's pretty no. much uh, Masterson's Whitmore Sisters and then Steve. Um, yeah. So that kind of takes up enough time. But yeah, right. I mean, I'm always open for other projects and collaborations. She records a lot with other people. Yeah. yeah. Recording, especially, but touring, yeah, I guess it's good to keep people around you that you can. Uh, Is that by design? I mean, yeah, especially now. I think after being stuck at home and being like separated from family and yeah. friends for so long, it's like, you know, to have to, it's and it also it's really weird getting back out there and touring during COVID because it's just weird everywhere and not everybody's taking it seriously and it's stressful. There's been breakthroughs. And so you really kind of do want to be like with your pod and with people that you yeah, trust. Um, really trust um, to be around. Yeah, so. that's good. That was kind of like my like um, goal when when we started going back into this is I just wanted to be around the people that I loved and cared about the most. And thankfully, I can do that and play music. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you uh, when you came back uh, from the pandemic and started doing your thursday night shows mm -hmm. again you moved it earlier huh i did 
because I was doing my online show that was earlier. Earlier, okay. And that was, and we've been essentially not every week, but most of the time we've been live streaming it. So to kind of keep that sort of base of people that have collectively kind of helped me through the pandemic, yeah, by keeping those going. I. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you phrased it like that. I didn't have a good time. I, I would have a good time doing my own ones, but like the Skyrocket ones were annoying to do. You're just sitting there mm-hmm. singing out a Not being able thing. to play together was really, really hard for me. That was weird. Uh, but one thing, though, was like the enjoyment that people got out of it. Because I would do my, my live streams like just for a month and then mm-hmm. take a month off and then come back again. But I noticed that like when you people would be like, what? This, this was what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Like I had you at like six to seven. I had this other guy I was watching at seven. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and it meant a lot to people. It really did. Um, it still does. So some people are still doing that. Are you doing it? I I haven't. Well, I I moved it essentially, so it's not the same thing anymore. Right. Because um, it was a more of an intimate show through Zoom, and right. you can have more interactive with the people that are there. Right. Now it's more live streaming in the sense of what a lot of people were doing, like just playing live on Facebook or whatever. Right. Um, so that that's different to me because I'm not interacting right. as much. Yours was like, I did yours, it was like yeah. a VIP situation, like people... Yeah, it, it was a ticketed yeah. event, you right, know, essentially, right. and 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 um, it was kind of nice because you could see people's faces and they could I- interact. There's one song that I I had going into it that it was perfect for their emojis, oh, so yeah. they would interact yeah. that way. And now I don't know how to do that live because <laughs> 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 can't send up like a whole bunch of like hearts, you know. <laughs> like, it's it's funny how weird that that <laughs> culture kind of became about the communication between like, oh yeah, Steve, me too. Like you're talking to these people reading the thing. Mm-hmm. That was so odd. Yeah. It was really odd. I guess it's, it, I mean, it's going to still be odd. I, I yeah, it's going to be odd for a while. And I kind of like, I always like flourish in awkward situations. So I've in somewhat enjoyed all of this <laughs> to some degree. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, the Ballad of Sissy and, Por- uh, and Porter, you that's a single that's out now. I don't know when I'm supposed to put this out, um, but I figured before the record came out. So we yeah. could talk deeply about songs people could listen to, but I didn't want to get too deep. Oh, except for I did want to make sure that you knew this. Uh, superficial World of Love. Yeah. That's, so far, that's my jam right now on that album. I feel that one a lot. Um, I That one, I, I kind of had coming into it and Eleanor helped me kind of finish it off. But I think the inspiration, especially production wise, um, Eleanor and I grew up also with classical influence a Uh lot and our mother specifically was opera. Um, and so we would go to see her perform Traviata when we were like really small and, and just seeing all those sort of dramatic, like very, uh, um, what am I saying? They're like arrangement wise, there's just a lot of dynamics to it. And so that was something that we really got to kind of have fun with on that one. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. You, you did like pizzicato strings and stuff on there? Um, All I kinds did. of strings. That yeah. one is um, mostly a baritone violin and a regular violin, just strings. Um, uh, the pizzicato arrangement was on the cover that we did. Um, oh, right. The McCartney. Um, on the McCartney yeah. tune. I'm um, sorry. Yeah. Um, so. But her string arrangements are just really prevalent throughout the whole record, yeah, they really which is are. awesome. Yeah, That's my thing. And yeah. your harmonies are so beautiful. Yes. Yeah. So on the ballad of Sissy and Porter, you came in right after Porter had passed, right? And we you were doing something, think, like you put out a song or you were doing a show. Something was going on. Well, I was trying to remember Fuck that. with Sad Girls was released right around the time that, that we lost Porter. Like I released that, I think, a month or a few weeks before. Yeah, and then we, I guess about a year after he passed, we organized um, a fundraiser a, a fundraiser to put out his last record. record out. Maybe that's when you mm-hmm. came on. Um, tell me a bit about that song. Well, and I wrote that one um, a bit afterwards. I'd, I'd gone out to do the House of Songs. Um, Graham Weber had put it together mm-hmm. and, and uh, got this group, and Bonnie Montgomery was one of the people. And... Um, you know, it was kind of a running theme because you're doing co-writes with everybody that's there. And so I sat down with everybody and we were sort of talking about the grief that we'd gone to, like another person had lost their father and so on and so forth. 
And uh, Bonnie and I actually sat down last. And she just has that really fun, like, old-timey country sort of thing, too. And, and um, I wanted to write a song about Porter. And I already felt like Eleanor and Chris had accomplished it with one of their songs that they had. And um, so I wanted to try to tell, like, sort of our love story in a way. It's a beautiful song. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, it still gets... It's those things are they never go away, do they? Nope, no, nope. they never do. And a lot of this record, there's there's are you dealing with grief throughout the yeah, for sure. Um, there's actually the very first song that we wrote, um, together, um, before we even talked about doing doing this record, um, was uh, The Friends We Leave Behind, and we wrote that, um, the day after George Reeve passed, and um, the day you came on here, um, the remember day, that, yeah. Yeah, actually. That was so weird. Yeah. Okay, so that was that same day. So we did uh, your show, and then we Bonnie. I went back to Bonnie's, and we wrote uh, Friends We Leave Behind. Um, and uh, there's there's definitely, you know, that's universal. Everyone, you cannot, you know, get out of this world alive. No. <laughs> no. And everyone is going to have to deal with loss at some point. Um, and I think it's really uh, therapeutic to be able, for myself, to be able to write about somebody that I love that's passed um in song and to kind of like keep celebrating them and keep their memory alive um but that's really therapeutic I think to the listener too we've we've you know had a lot of people reach out and just say you know thank you for the song I lost my mom and you know I really relate to this and um so I think um you know music is therapy for people yeah well and that's the whole kind of theme of the album too with it being called ghost stories you know we're like we we are literally talking about people we've lost and 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 needing to kind of rephrase that so it's not to be fearful of it right you know to to celebrate to celebrate it and to speak about it and share the stories and keep keep the memories of people alive yeah our our culture really runs from it yeah yes. and hides from it like it's not going to happen it's you know what i mean yeah they, they they're always looking for like younger live forever <clears throat> and right. nobody does <laughs> no no one yet mm-hmm. <laughs> no um who was the guy that played drums uh his name is jamie douglas and uh he plays uh drums with shooter jennings yeah and um he's a really talented guy super easy to work with and, okay um Sweet lots of ideas and uh you know a true like percussion player that can really play a lot of he does uh, a lot of stuff doesn't yeah. he yeah he's really great yeah i uh I th- that's how I knew his name was through uh, Ted Russell mm-hmm. Camp. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's a bass player guy. Yeah. Um, that guy's great. Yeah. He yeah. Is. And you were able to play after you guys recorded this stuff, then you were able to play with him? Yeah. He and I went in um, to Mark Rain's. Uh, yeah. Oh, shoot. What is his studio called? Um, I'll have to think of that later. Um, but yeah, Mark Rain's uh, did the engineering for the rhythm section at uh, the Station House. And, it's a really um, cool space too, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It definitely has its own ghosts mm-hmm. in that space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was thinking about you guys. Do you guys have you been watching those? Uh, they're super nerdy and long ass things, but they're these Sunset Sound started doing their own like show on YouTube. Oh shoot, I haven't seen any like, of those. That's awesome. Three hour conversations with like the Van Halen guy and like Susan Rogers, like the Prince people, and all kinds of. We made so, our No Time for Love Songs yeah. record at Sunset Sound in the same studio that um, Prince had locked out for like years. And like, Which? It, um, studio 3. And studio yeah. 3. And you, I don't know, it's just uh, <laughs> crazy to think about how much money they must have spent locking that out. Um, but he had like a bed and like everything yeah. was purple and purple sheets. and <laughs> all kinds I wish they kept the purple. It's not purple anymore. Did you ever look no. through the, the book that they have in the office? The, mm-hmm. the photo album they have that there's a photo of like two half naked people like right in the entrance and it was like whoever was the first person there that day i don't know someone took a picture of it but i guess they saw people like had jumped the fence or something and were like just having sex like in the entry way <laughs> oh, in like the 70s or yeah. something but there's this weird picture in there that blew my mind when i was there um that studio is intense yeah, it's really cool. It's a great place to work. Yeah. Um, you guys, didn't you do, um, you you did that record there, but when didn't you do something else there yeah, too? Yeah, um, Chris and I uh, were uh, 
kind of in the tracking band for uh, Tanya T- Tucker's record. Oh, uh, that's Wild right. Mm-hmm. Wow, that so, record really took off and sure did. exploded. Yeah, Chris is about to uh, get in the studio for the next one. Oh, really? So, mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome. What about you, Bonnie? You've been playing with other people too? Uh, I just did a record with John Moreland. Nice. Um, I, before the pandemic, he put out LP5, which I played on. We went up to Denton and um, recorded at Echo Labs mm-hmm. with uh, Matt Pence. And we just did it again in, uh, last month, which was really fun. Awesome. Yeah. Weren't you playing with James McMurtry too? But yeah, we did some we did some touring before the pandemic. Uh, I was kind of like his go to opener, right? Um, and uh, he has been kind of slow to get back at it, but it looks like he's going to be going out next month. And unfortunately, I can't go, but Betty Sue is going to open up for him, which I'm really excited. Oh, for that. awesome! Yeah, that's awesome. going to be really good. Um, <clears throat> you guys are doing a European tour, the Mastersons and the Whitmore Sisters. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's actually technically I think we have a build as Bonnie opening because when we actually booked this like way before the Whitmore sisters. Oh really? And so these are rescheduled dates um, from the pandemic and we're really keeping our fingers crossed and hoping that it's going to happen. Yeah. But there's definitely been some cancellations um, in Holland and like bars have to close at eight. And so they're moving shows to the afternoon. And um, so we've got our fingers crossed. We're hoping that's going to work out. I really want it to work out because I really want to be in Spain on my birthday. So I I have a feeling Spain is not going to cancel. So (laughs) (laughs) we'll have, we'll have a birthday. They know how to live. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So during the pandemic, um, you obviously made it through. And I I would talk to you guys during it too. Like right at the beginning, I remember. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, um, we made it through. <laughs> Who's, well, you guys are neighbors with somebody that I know. Uh, uh, Fabian. Fabian. Oh, you know Fabian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fabian Gillivet, Uh he's D- quite a character. It's, it's, <laughs> you guys are his neighbor like in a quadruplex thing? Yeah. So we, it's around the corner from Cantor's? Mm-hmm. He still lives there? He still lives there. Last time I was at his house was like 1998. I'm not joking. <laughs> You know, Chris Chris roomed with him yeah. um, maybe just a little before that, um, like in the 90s. Right. Um, they were roommates, so that's how they knew each other. Um, but yeah, Fabian is an incredible musician and producer and um, character. quite a character. <laughs> Did you guys ever know this guy, Jed Malone, Scottish um, dude? I know the name, yeah. Yeah. Um, that was my manager. That's how I knew okay. Fabian. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And. To go to Largo shows, we go to Fabian's and park there, and then all walk over to Largo. Uh, yeah, in the nineties, when it was there, just down the alleyway. Yeah, <laughs> you can walk in the back door. So awesome! Yeah. Do you like it, that neighborhood? Is it still uh, nice? Well, it's changed quite a bit. We actually um, decided to move um, during the pandemic because it was just getting a little bit rough having you know people on all sides of oh, yeah. your walls, and we were trying to record and stuff at home and. Um, we just uh, wanted to get into a little bit of a quieter neighborhood and um, found a little duplex um, not far from there. Um, but yeah, the neighborhood's definitely changed a lot. There's a lot of like, uh, you know, a lot of the Jewish businesses have um, closed and there's a lot of like hip hop stuff coming in. And um, it's, you know, it's definitely changed quite a bit. And I just got really tired of that alleyway. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty sketchy. Well, it's just noisy. Oh, yeah. And, you know, dumpsters and stuff. <laughs> what is that like? Fairfax is that main Fairfax street there? Fairfax and Beverly, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, I miss that. I haven't gone. I, I guess I was there in 2019, but not for long enough to get annoyed by it. Yeah, I really like. <laughs> I like LA. It's all right. Yeah. yeah. It all depends on what what you're doing, where you are. Right. Like I'm not commuting with. or having yeah. to drive in traffic, so like it right. doesn't bother me. And my neighborhood's really there's plenty of stuff around to walk to. And did you like it there? Do you like it there? I like it better now. I, I think uh, I tend to be a little bit allergic to the sun. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I developed a sun allergy during COVID. Mm. During twenty, I'm not joking. Wow. <laughs> I've been in the sun my whole life. Right. No sunscreen, nothing. Right. And I put on sunscreen and I went, uh, yeah, and I, I have a skin. Out. I break out in hives in 10 minutes wow. when the sun is high. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't, I'm a night person really. And I just feel like uh, there was this sort of, overly happiness about LA but I've I've calmed down and I think partly because I smoke a lot of pot and they're very into that culture as well so um, the pot stores are cool time. I know <laughs> I just went to California and I went to one it's so awesome they just it's normal <clears throat> yeah. It's, yeah it's normalized it's not some 
freaky thing where you it's have just to like hear... going in a retail store it's like going and buying a blast yeah. except for it's like an eighth and those people are so knowledgeable <laughs> totally. like they're so helpful and Smell so nice it. isn't this amazing yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i had a thing where uh, i went to one in la and on in 2019 and it was weird it was downtown but i was like walking distance from my hotel and i was like oh, i'll go check it out see what it's like there's a guy with like an m16 and like riot gear outside right. and stuff but when i walked in the main room where all the the product is my face, I guess this guy was like, first time, huh? Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes get about like yeah, this big. It's just like, You're like, wow. This is the candy store I've always <laughs> yeah, envisioned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Bonnie was just in town for some shows we did on the West Coast. And like she went to the store and she like stocked up. And she always gets like way too much to yeah, finish while she's there. And then we played San Francisco and she had this buddy bring out like just a whole shopping bag full of like edibles and tinctures and flour and all <laughs> right. kinds of stuff and so she left me with like enough drugs to for like the next couple of years like you're I, welcome yeah i guess yeah. <laughs> it's gonna That's, take me a little bit to get through all that <laughs> yeah well hopefully i'll be back out there to help you yeah, yeah. yeah. save it up for for when mm-hmm. she comes yeah yeah um so the tour with the three of you guys do you play in the mastersons in that that's what i was leading to with that do you play bass um, in the Mastersons? So, yeah. Um, actually, on our most recent Mastersons record, um, you know, we kind of had the idea of having Bonnie play bass because, you know, we lost George and he was like literally my favorite bass player on the planet next to McCartney. And um, and Bonnie, like, pretty much like apes George parts and like... He is my guru. Yeah. yeah. And uh, she she plays that kind of melodic style of bass that I want to hear. Um just you know with the counter melodies and stuff and um so we had the idea of including her but we were like i don't know it might be too much with like two married people and siblings and like we should have a backup plan we should have a backup plan this could go really horribly wrong so so we talked to shooter about it and he was like i think that'd be cool and so we, we we brought in this guy tyler chester who also plays amazing bass but he's he's uh also an incredible um keyboard player and so we were like he makes an appearance on the record as well yeah so um we kind of were like well let's let's have him on this session too so that we're covered either way yeah (laughs) yeah. things fall apart um but then everything went great we all got along and shooter really loved uh, bonnie's bass playing so she played uh, bass on at least half the record and sang on it and um so she's definitely been part of the master since live but that was kind of like the first record that um that we really had her play a big part on. Right. And the record came out at the beginning of uh, March, March yeah. of 2020. 2020. And yeah. so like our, our whole tour plan kind of went out the window, but now it's, it's, it's even more inclusive because with the Whitmore sisters and the Mastersons, and we're going to be playing as a band too. And in, um, in, Europe, in Europe, we've got a um, Brady blade joining us on. Awesome. Drums, so that's going to be really fun. <laughs> wow. Yeah. He's yeah. amazing. He is yeah. amazing. He's actually in town right now. That's what I saw. Mm-hmm. He's doing the thing. I, there was some guy I talked to last year that was in. Oh, famous Amos's son. You know that guy, the Reverend Sean Amos? No, mm. I don't. That guy is awesome. And Brady plays with him. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. who's it? Does Brady have a brother that plays bass? Um, or- Brady has a brother that also plays drum, Brian Blake. Oh, okay. He's like, um, like a jazz, well, world renowned jazz drummer. Um, played with a lot of folks um they're both incredible yeah Brady, there's a confidence to brady it's like have you guys seen those anderson pack and uh and bruno mars tunes mm-hmm. there's like this like like a confidence that's at a level of sassiness but not obnoxious right. kind of thing and that's <laughs> when brady's in those videos that he did with sean amos they were like those those acapella kind of videos totally he was just so like yeah <laughs> he's very sassy yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i love very that. confident yeah um, tell me a little bit about this McCartney song that, uh, I wrote it down, uh, Wings of a Nightingale. On the Wings of a Nightingale. Yeah. Um, so I guess I didn't really know that song very well. Um, the Everly Brothers, actually Paul McCartney wrote that song for the Everly's and, um, the way I found the song was, um, Will Rigby, who was playing, uh, drums with Steve at the time sent us this demo and it's the demo of McCartney from when though um, when is it when did you write it um I think they recorded it like in the late recorded. 80s yeah. or with um it, it was a Dave Edmonds produced record oh cool um and so the Everly's 
um, did it. But it was really interesting to hear McCartney's demo of the tune because he was like kind of, you know, did all the harmony parts and was like, oh, really so. trying to like, you know, make it was written for them. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so um, Chris and I had like worked it up at sound checks and like we've always loved the song, but never really done it live. And then um, we were talking to to Aaron Lee Tajian about um, like just song ideas for the record and um, he actually sent us a song that we ended up covering of his, uh, of his yeah. but he suggested um, On the Wings of a Nightingale and that just reminded Chris um, and I of that song too and um, so we uh, we decided to cut it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, that's so weird. He, I, I mean, he literally wrote an Everly Brothers song. I'd never heard it before. Yeah, it's a it's a really beautiful tune. It's gorgeous, mm -hmm. and so is uh, Aaron Lee Tajins. Yeah, big heart, sick mind. Yeah, that, that's gonna be the single. Um, and the next uh, one, it'll be the like the, the radio focus oh, track, okay. I guess, for the radio. Um, oh. So the focus track. <laughs> but he liked the idea of us turning it into a duet. You know, he hadn't thought His about song. it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it kind of... It wasn't written as a duet, and so when it, you sing it as a duet, it kind of takes on another meaning, like yeah. uh, a different uh, perspective, I guess. Right. That's interesting when songs do that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Music is so, like, malleable. Yeah. And it is when it for comes the to interpretation. interpretation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's hilarious because there's so many things, like somebody came up to me the other day and was, like, asking me about a line and fine or whatever, and it was like, do you hold them close just because you got him. And she's like, are you talking about cards? And I'm like, it's up to you. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about cards. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I was like, yeah. I, I know that that wasn't my inspiration behind right. it, but if that is where you're going with, yeah, then yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, so when you do shows as the Whitmore sister, do you just play this record or do you each throw in, do you throw in some fuck with sad girls or something or we do we've yeah. been kind of throwing in uh the tunes like we did this west coast run and like bonnie did an opening set and then we had like her get up during our set and sing along with masterson's tunes and then do a couple whitmore sisters tunes and so we're kind of like even opening for the jayhawks last night um we threw a whitmore sisters song in there and then awesome um when we do a Whitmore's opening set. We're gonna throw a Masterson's and a Bonnie Whitmore song in there. So, <laughs> God, that's like a close harmony, like love fest. Going yeah, to see like, you guys with the Jayhawks. I know mm -hmm. it's the, just like, <laughs> like I couldn't think of a better pairing for all of us. So. It just gives all the good feels. Like especially last night, I just felt like everybody was vibrating in that really like happy space. That's awesome. Yeah, God, that's a small backstage too for all those people. Well, oh. they put us in some kind of other VIP room. Oh, really? Off to the side. So. Oh, in this that and side thing. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. There's no mirror in there. <laughs> There's no mirror in there. The lighting um, is terrible. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, oh. Wow. Well, Hi, look at that dog. She just woke up. She's like, "Hey, guys." Oh, is this still happening? Huh? This guy okay, talks for this guy, gonna, this guy and his friends just talk forever. <laughs> I'm just gonna lay back down. Um, so, uh, what, what if Europe? After Europe, are you guys gonna do more touring? Like, is there like a whole? Because you guys have like a whole team and everything. When I opened up that that uh, your publicity, your bio paper, you have there's a whole group of people there on board doing this. Yeah, it's really nice to have uh, someone else to help um, and not be self-releasing <laughs> a record. Yeah. So um, my first time with this actually. Compass Compass Red House is uh, uh, licensed the record and got a good team of folks helping us. And um, yeah, after Europe, uh, we're basically gonna uh, join back up with the Jayhawks in the Midwest and then um, continue on on our own and, um, and we're doing the outlaw country cruise yeah and outlaw country we got a whole tour plan for march and april did you just go on a cruise too um we haven't been on a cruise okay. since um before, before the pandemic times. it was like i literally went to all the super spreader events that you could possibly go to before <laughs> right um, before. before the shutdown yeah. <laughs> it's like we went to nam and we went to um folk alliance, folk alliance and we did the Outlook oh, Cruise and Kayamo and Cruise. <laughs> and then we were in New York uh, during the height of community spread. And that's where I got COVID. Oh. So, yeah. How did you do with it? I was sick for five weeks and I Jesus. still can't smell and taste 100%. Really? And um, yeah, it's uh, definitely no joke. <laughs> but and, we uh, were with her and both Chris and I didn't get it. Yeah. So at least I wasn't a super spreader. Yeah. <laughs> 
but, but you know so that weird. was pre-mask and I wasn't feeling uh, any symptoms and so like when we canceled the rest of the dates and we flew out of Boston without a mask and then you know I showed up in Austin because our van was parked here for South by the which was already canceled right. and um you know like one or two nights after that flight, I started feeling sick. And that was like at the point where like the grocery stores were starting to empty and stuff. Yeah. And we were like, okay, I guess we need to haul ass back to LA. So I was like getting sick on the drive and um, oh. it was, it was pretty gnarly. And then when I got ho- home, like I wasn't even sick enough to get a test. And like my doctor sent me to the emergency room and they were like, yeah, you probably have it. We don't have enough tests. Um, go Uh, home and um, so it took an antibody test to to confirm it but yeah not fun no (laughs) Um, so really happy about this uh, vaccine allowing us to get back to work me too and I have to say like getting it with the vaccine was not a horror story by any means like I lost my sense of taste and smell and that's kind of how I knew because I had a terrible cold like a week before Hmm. and i went to the doctor and i took four tests because i was playing gigs right and so uh i uh, the girl i was going out with then came down with it she Uh. got it there was some unvaxxed people at her work Uh that they found out after they got covid that they were so this whole thing spread from that thing but um the main thing that was so weird was i got when i got it because it was in august of 2021 so When I tested positive, I had been testing so much and being so freaked out and so freaked out for a year and a half. And just like that when they're like, it tested positive, I was like, "Ah." (laughs) now I don't have to worry about that anymore. You know what I mean? It was weird. I mean, I'm sure it was different with you, but there'd been so long, like trying to keep away from it and not catch it that when you finally caught it, it was like, okay. It was (laughs) kind of like good to have it at the very beginning because I felt before we were able to get vaccinated, I felt at least a little bit safer safer right. around my parents and stuff. But we took it really seriously. Like we didn't, um, the first time I visited my parents, like we didn't hug yeah. and um, yeah. we ate outside and stayed yeah. away from wore each masks. other and um, wore our masks. So, and, you know, still doing that indoors um, at the venues and stuff, especially in Texas, because you're just not sure. Yeah. So... Um, and I, I can't get sick cause I've got a lot of work to do next week and yeah, and can't cancel. <laughs> so. No, no, um, not at all. Well, yeah. my roommate just tested positive and after her booster, after she had a booster shot. So it's <sighs> like, but she's like, was totally fine. She had like one, a headache and a little bit of a fever and that's it. And so it's like it, science is working, which yeah. is great. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. I never got a headache and I had 99 fever and I took two Advil and never had a fever again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot that, better than getting hospitalized and being oh, out of the yeah. air. <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, one thing about it, I mean, I'm smoking that jewel thing, but I quit smoking. Good for you. Uh, during Congrats. it, and I haven't gone back. Awesome. It's weird. I don't really want to. Do you guys ever, did you guys ever smoke cigarettes? Do you smoke? You, you, I will not admit to that. Okay. <laughs> if you, I never realized you have smoking dreams. Like I'm starting to have them now and oh, they're yeah. super intense and there's like, I'm guilty. I feel horrible <laughs> when I'm doing it because I feel like I've done so well. It's real weird. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can see that. Um, Yeah. Like our dad was really like avid, like, okay, you can have unprotected sex and right. have kids, <laughs> but if you get a tattoo or smoke, then you're dead. You're dead. Dead to me. Strange for a Navy man, because they're uh-huh. the guys that started the whole tattoo craze in mainstream. Yeah. yeah. He's always been well, an oddball, he got, though. He got out of the Navy as quick as he could. <laughs> right? Yeah, you guys don't seem like military kind of people. No. No. Well, And he really just did it because he had he a... He wanted to fly. He wanted to fly, and he was an early draft pick. So uh, he, if he... He enrolled in the Enrolled, training, um, he could actually... Was it Vietnam that yes. was going on? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think you were born during the like, Korean War. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's actually kind of interesting, too, because like, most people were having kids at that age or whatever, and m- mom didn't have you until like she was 28, which was old, you know, considered. Right, yeah. At the, the day. Yeah. Old mom. Mm-hmm. 28. <laughs> That's terrible. My mom was super young. She yeah. was like 22 or something when she had me. Mm-hmm. Or even 21, maybe. I don't well, know. that's normal. And they were married at that time. Yeah. In so it's just it, the fact that like she was like, nope, I'm going to pursue my, my career. My career. It's pretty awesome. Did. Yeah. 
in the opera. Does she still sing at stuff or does she? She doesn't do the classical as much, but both my mom and dad play with each other. They, <laughs> they, um, they, they actually, uh, they write songs about it too. I don't even know if we want to get <laughs> into that, but they have a song called uh, We're, We're Having Sex, sex in Our 60s. 60s and they're now in their 70s and still bragging about it. So good for them. Um, oh. But yeah, they have a, so they, they perform together um, and uh, I don't know, I think they've got a gig that they do every so often at the Starlight Interlingua, so... They, you guys did a thing, didn't you? Don't you sometimes do the Whitmore Family Jam? We do. Um, we definitely stopped playing with Dad when he started writing the more risque kind of because well, it's just <laughs> awkward to be his daughters on stage while he's talking about <laughs> stooping our mom. But you know, <laughs> things like that just get a little weird. <laughs> but yeah, we're 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 doing it again. Um, it's basically the the Thursday around Christmas. Um, I'll do the Whitmore Family reunion, and so we're, we'll be doing that again this year at the. Um, on the 23rd. Awesome. Yeah. Did you guys, uh, I know that we, we have to go and work and play shows to, to do stuff, but there's people that came, came out of this pandemic. There's like two different kinds. And one of them was like, I'm in a band with Trish Murphy and she came out of it. As soon as it looked like we were going to start booking gigs and playing out again, she was like, Hey guys, I, I don't want to have to do this all the time. Like I have been. Mm-hmm. And I, a few people were like that. And then there's people like Scrappy that are like, I'm starting a new band. I'm just, I'm going to play every five seconds at a place. You know what I mean? Right. Where did you, where, like, where did you fall, Bonnie, on that? Um, I definitely got back to it, but I well, also, to, right? I think a lot of people realize how much they didn't like to travel. Yeah. Um, and then like the wear and tear and it, like, I can say that my back has liked me a lot through the pandemic, yeah. but I'm, I like to move and I like to be constant in motion so i missed that and so i really wanted to get back to that as soon as possible but it is weird to be in like the mass gathering business essentially and that's what we're trying to avoid right now right yeah it's a weird thing well and also we're really just beer salesmen and yeah. when people start <laughs> drinking they don't wear a mask and no um, they don't behave well <laughs> yeah so it's it's been interesting i mean i definitely missed playing but um i feel like we jumped right back on the hamster wheel and uh, just have been going pretty quickly ever since. So I would like to figure out some kind of a balance to get back to all of that lovely self care that um, I was into yeah. <laughs> while we were stuck at home. And um, there was something out. about that. Yeah. Well, being um, forced yeah. to slow down was kind of beneficial for everybody in some regards. And I think that we have been on this perpetual motion for so long that we don't know how to. And so I, I kind of like this, like I said, I like this awkward period because we're realizing what we're missing and what needs to change and trying to go about implementing that for ourselves now. Right. Um, but we have a record to promote, so right. we're going to just stay on that hamster wheel for a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys also, you also have some awesome new merch. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. That I we saw. Have, uh, my favorite is I Survived the Whitmore yeah. Sisters, and that's for um, our true fans who already know us and uh, <laughs> they know what that means. Um, I don't know if the rest of, uh, the people who haven't discovered us will, uh, quite appreciate that, but, um, <laughs> oh, they will. <laughs> and we've got a, I heard the Whitmore sisters <laughs> shirt and, um, that's, it's been fun to kind of, is there a combo like one that says I heart the Whitmore sisters on the front and then I survived the Whitmore <laughs> sisters on the back. That's a good idea. Or maybe you could wear a hat that says one and a shirt that says the other. I could get a hoodie totally. with the, like, uh, I heart the Whitmore sisters. <laughs> I survived the Whitmore sisters on the back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there you go. I was I I uh I think you guys are so amazingly talented and I think you're so wonderful like such wonderful people. Thank and you. I feel like somewhere like you're also my sister in a way or like some <laughs> some egg was split somewhere. Right. Cuz there's I don't know why I relate to you like everything about you I'm just always like I know. <laughs> I know dude. I'm in the, my my brain is as weird as yours well and we do this every time we do this every we, time. we're like we need to hang out more <laughs> yeah, and then no we more. don't then we until don't. the next time i come and do like a podcast <laughs> gotta make you. more records <laughs> <laughs> see um, that on it make you come do another thursday with me yeah i did oh here's another thing so after the pandemic have you guys noticed that with the exception of continental club continental club still has shows that start at midnight which mm-hmm. is weird see. weird seems weird uh, yeah, but it's not the same anymore. Like McMurtry's now on Tuesdays because nobody wants to do the midnight slot anymore. And it's not a late night town anymore. That's what is so like mind blowing to me about <laughs> Austin. 
I started playing with Scrappy, and he was like, he was like, you want to play? I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, cool. I got this great gig Wednesday night at midnight, and I was just, or Tuesday night. I can't remember what night it was because he switched, and I was just like, midnight. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, what am I supposed to do until like 11:30? Take a nap. Like Take a what? Nap. <laughs> no, because I wake up so tired if I nap right. too late. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was weird. But I mean, did you guys? Have you guys? Do you guys? Are you earlier in your life now? Yes, I'm. I'm too old to do midnight shows. I think I can't. I don't. Well, I don't. I don't want to do the midnight shows. I like earlier shows. I'm glad that I have my show earlier because that was tough. Like doing right. the two, the ten thirty to one, right? It was rough on me and my guest every week. And right. so now having an earlier time slot, also because our audience is it yeah. wants to come out earlier. Yeah, and. And I feel like it's like kind of torturing our audience to ask them to come out at midnight. And then the people that are out at midnight have been drinking all night and aren't necessarily listening. So, right. Well, know. and that's the thing. Like what what we, what do, we do is more, is more intimate right. in that regard. Right. And, and, you know, it's not a party atmosphere. Right. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But like it's hard to writer. it's hard to, you know, I mean, I, I do that to every week in the gallery. I just basically tell everybody disclaimer. Hey, if you think you're having an intimate conversation, you're not because right. <laughs> right. it just carries, room. <laughs> yeah. you know, that room's amazing. It has its own it. magic. Yes, it does. It's so weird. It. And it shouldn't like by all like if you walked, if you were from, uh, you know, Minnesota or something, and you're like, oh, I've got this gig in Austin at the Continental Club, but the gallery, but the Continental right. Club's this lunch, but it's in the gallery. And if you walked in there and you saw the PA, and it'd like, yeah. you'd be like, what is this janky? But there's so, it's like the weird, like the front room of the hole in the wall. Do you guys ever have any uh -huh. transcendent musical moments there? Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. It's weird. More than any nice place. <laughs> like it's the magic of the room. <laughs> it's the magic of the room. And I believe in like the, the, those who haunt it have a lot to do with it too. Ghost stories. Yes. They live in those places. Wow, that was amazing. Did we do that on Bring purpose? Or did there you, you go. Did you do that on purpose? Yeah. It's just like, You're welcome. wow, she found a way to do that. <laughs> Maybe you should co-host and you could do things that are important like that. <laughs> like being able to bring it all back. I think it's hilarious though because I do think there is somebody that it's because something always is tampering with stuff in there. Like, you know. Gotta be a ghost. There's Yeah. There's a lot of cable slash weird well, channel thing. It's well, that's weird. just fun. I also feel like as a musician, in order to uh, convey your message in that room, you have to have a certain level of maturity to be able to work in those situations and make it work for you. Yeah. I've never walked in there and thought it sounded like shit. Mm -mm. I'm always shocked about that too. I'm like, why does this sound terrible? <laughs> but I think because everybody there knows what they're doing enough to like the drummer plays what? to the... They you also I mean? pick really good people to be in there. That's true. Like, uh, you know, going and seeing Brandon Temple and, and Red yeah, on yeah. and Rosie Flores and yeah. like all that kind of stuff. Like just the fact that I get to be part of that, you know, uh, weekly residency sort of thing is something that I really cherish. You yeah. Know? And for me, it really is just about the intimacy of the, of, the, of the show. I mean, that's the reason why people would always go see McMurtry in that setting, too. Mm -hmm. Like... It's just so living room aspect. Right, right. Like people are just sitting there on the floor and paying attention. Yeah. Or at least that's the intention. But um, I don't know. I just, I love that space. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like covered, infested with mold probably. Yeah, you yeah. know, you get the, like, the dust <laughs> yeah. every time you walk up the stairs. Yeah. You know? But I don't know. It's a, there's something just extra magical in this space yeah i always thought that about that old largo place oh totally yeah it's a shame that that's not there anymore but um yeah i think it's just an empty space they open it up as another venue um for a little while but um i don't think they're doing anything now but the new largo space is is pretty cool it's a little bigger yeah um but yeah for sure that was a really magical i loved spot. being there mm -hmm. i never played there but i loved being there <clears throat> i think there's also like I think of a lot of these music venues as churches. Yeah. I mean, there are gathering and you're sharing and the yeah. healingness of music and everything together. And so there's that community aspect to them. And for me, that's the Continental's always been that way. Dan Silverleaf and Denton's always yeah. been that way for mm -hmm. me too. And, you know, and, uh, even I played the chapel opening up for McMurtry in San Francisco and like that place, like you feel how, yeah. how the history of a place, yeah. you know, it really, it 
it, it's one of those things that like it's a weight, but it's also something beautiful to carry. Yeah. You know, when the you monkey duck feels good like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To me. Totally. Very much. Um, there's also, have you guys ever played at Anderson Fair in Houston? I yes. We haven't because um, we've always been at the deck. The deck I feel yeah. like we'd be like crossing a, a line. Right, right, right. <laughs> to go over there. Yeah, somebody asked me to open. That's yeah. the only time I'd ever been there. But that place seemed like a really... Yeah, there's a lot, of history, there a lot of history there too. I haven't actually played there. I lied. I'm I was thinking Old Quarter, and we oh, just yeah. played that. That's no. another the place that has the wonderful. Yeah, that was groovy. Like, yeah, I don't know what I didn't know what to expect. For I've never Galveston. played Galveston yeah. before, and it was just such a great audience and great room and cool people town. running it. Yeah, Ooh. Galveston is like I oh, I don't know why dude. I never really spent any time oh. there. Okay, so <laughs> this morning I woke up and looked at my Facebook memories, and so last year. Uh, leading up to December, my grandma is 98 now. She was 97 then. She was like, I can't sit in my house anymore. I just can't and stare yeah. out the windows. So I'm going to throw down for a beach house, like on the beach nice. for the whole month of December. And whoever wants to come get tested and come live with me for a month. So a few That's of us awesome. did. Awesome. And it was awesome. Oh, fun. Yeah. It was unbelievable. I don't remember where I was going with that. Well, it's, I, I just, uh, the, you know, a lot of the cities in Texas um, are kind oh, of newer good. cities, yeah, you yeah. know, and like that's, that town is like so old. There's like really old bu- buildings and uh, so much history there and you can, yeah. you can definitely uh, feel that. Yeah. Well, anytime you walk down a drag and you see like a, a like a witchcraft shop, I'm just <laughs> I'm like, this is my this place. Is my town. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, oh, this is what I was going to tell you is there's a great uh, podcast that Tony Camel has mm-hmm. been doing. Okay. Do you know that guy? Mm-mm. I've only, uh, Scott Davis, I guess, worked on his latest record and, and he, he just put so. something out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was just on the show. Wooden Wire, right? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but he he did a whole, like, uh, deep dive on, like, Galveston and the and the old quarter, or what's it called? Old quarter? Old quarter. Old quarter. Old quarter. Yeah. And, uh, and just kind of, like, everything about it. And I've been going there like my whole life and I love Galveston in fact there's like a thing uh, when I'm going out with someone or even my ex-wife would say it all the time she'd be like we need to go somewhere for a weekend and then I'd go like and there she would be like don't say Galveston <laughs> it is not great and you're like no, it's the greatest place on earth well, I understand why you guys didn't work out yeah <laughs> but I just I there's just something about it and especially yeah. if you've been there all year, there's also like a weird like Kind of at the end of the line. It's at the end of the it's line. Like People go like there Florida to get away Keys from feeling. stuff. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's like you're weird. going there to be to disappear, so, so yeah. to speak. You know. Yeah. Tony Campbell has all these songs, like the Surfer, about like some weird dude he met, never saw again, like some old guy that just kind of. Yeah. It's it's a it's actually really interesting. His podcast and the album are all kind of about it. My a friend told me a story about going to Galveston and doing this whole like. Um, uh, to appease the saints apparently or whatever and so he's like all in white going into the carrying like a thing of honey and whatever and like like took it all yeah. off and like yeah, yeah and, and sacrificed it and he's like just weird sort of scenario of him walking into the water <laughs> in white and then walking out with nothing and everybody had been like who what the hell is happening right now and it's like oh it's galveston like everybody's like ah. he just got galveston <laughs> <laughs> you just got galveston um, a lot of people are going to get Wentward, that's for sure, with this record. So. That's true. Man, what a brilliant record. It comes out on, uh, on January 21st, 2022. So you got people have a little while to wait, but The Ballad of Sissy and Porter is out. Learn to Fly is out. And will there be hurting for, for a letdown, letdown also? Yeah. Is out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's out already? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry. That's a great song. Wait, what did I write about that? Yeah. That's... Oh, that one feels like a Neville Brothers song. Hurting that's for what letdown? I Yeah. That's all um, me. Yeah. You wrote that? Bonnie wrote that. Um, that's about, about my addiction to heartbreak. The ghost story that is Bonnie's love life. Yes. What is that? <laughs> are, do, are, are people like us just not very together when it comes to that sort of thing? Well, I was oddly enough having this strange conversation uh, with a friend last night about it. But it's like, I think my problem is, is that I figured out how to like fall in love with somebody without the relationship. <laughs> Yeah, you and can so, like, get excited you can get so, about somebody. So much inspiration out of those moments. Yeah, I guess um, so. But not have to commit. Yeah, not have to. Like, I still get to have my alone time. Yeah, that is a weird thing, isn't it? Well, that's the whole situation when I meet somebody. I'm always like, 
oh crap i don't want a relationship i want my relationship with myself right. you know and i think at least i've probably everybody feels this way but especially as a female you know you you kind of get lost in the relationship when when you're in it um and i'm just not very good at wheeze i guess is really what yeah. it comes down to so i understand that like I, my perfect yeah. relationship is one that like we have our own lives and choose to hang out together, but right. I don't want to live with somebody and I don't want babies. So it's like most of the reasons why you get together, I'm sort of like, but I don't want that. So yeah. Living with someone is a lot. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Except with Rosie. Look at her. Oh, I live with her. Gosh. Yeah. In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Well, don't take my dog. Um, <laughs> Watch out. I might. <laughs> no. Did you guys get another dog or no? Not no, yet. No. I, I think. It's tough uh, to jump right back in. It is. And like Shakti was the love of my life. And so it's just going to take a long time yeah. for me to um, to find another one. And, you know, I had a dog as a kid that was like the first love of my life. And I searched my whole adult life to find another dog like her. And that was Shakti. Wow. And now. I'm just going to be a motherless, dogless woman in her mid-40s. Well, finding a woman can fit our Child lifestyle, yeah. too, is hard. Yeah. You know? It is hard. Yeah. So that's... Do you have to either, they have to be good travelers or they right. have to stay home. And, you know, that's hard on the dog and... I'm glad I don't do, I mean, I haven't done any massive touring for a while. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's going to be a lot of it coming up. Mm -hmm. But... um yeah, it is. It it's a little bit of a challenge on that level. Yeah, but you know, I've I've got gigs in Houston. My grandma and my aunt love her, so I just go there and drop nice. her off and yeah, go do my thing and still stay there. So whatever, we'll figure it out. I can't believe she's sleeping so much. She's um, got her head on my foot. I know. What she did eat a shoe. You know, she did that eat definitely a shoe. does uh, get I, get you. Yeah. Um, out. Ghost stories available then. People can see you guys playing. Uh, you're going to do anything before Christmas or after Christmas or um, the I release? Guess not before this comes out. Um, but I will be visiting some radio stations and um, maybe doing an in store in town, hopefully. Nice. Um, so we'll, we'll keep you posted. Well, people can keep up with you guys at thewhitmoresisters.com. Yes. Get their, your new merch there. Mm -hmm. I survived. Pre orders up. Yeah. Pre-orders, uh, does that, does that pre-order? Yeah, pre-order campaign good. is rolling. Yeah, can, uh, okay. Order all the hats and shirts and records that you can stand. Oh yeah, bundles. Even some test pressing. Is but available. you can get a shirt now if you order it, right? Um, no, because we're not going to produce until the record comes out. Oh, okay. All right. Making everybody wait. So it's like, yeah, I see. Wait for it. I should put that on my wish list. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much. For Thanks coming for back us. on the show. Thanks it's great to have you. you both on together. Mm -hmm. oh. I hope this was good. Was <laughs> it, it good? It was good. It's always good hanging out <laughs> we with you. We just like hung out and talked. I was like, oh, we were recording. We talked well, about I didn't even realize lessons. that you had either. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, just want to like apologize to Ricky, I guess. for. I can leave that out, but I know Ricky, man. I know Ricky. <laughs> well, he won't listen to the song. I'm sure he won't listen He's to the podcast. He's not going to listen to this. <laughs> He's not going to want to, he's not going to listen to being roasted. <laughs> no. Thank you guys so much again for doing the show. It's great to see you. Thank you. Pleasure. You wanted to fly. That's the Whitmore Sisters. Their album, Ghost Stories, drops January 21st. Wherever it is that you stream and download your jams, you can get it that day. Go to the thewhitmoresisters.com for all of your Whitmore Sisters needs. And uh, go listen to the singles of the Ballad of Sissy and Porter and learn to fly right now. Wherever it is that you stream and download your, uh, your jams. You can also pre-order or pre-save Ghost Stories now. I want to thank Eleanor and Bonnie for coming by. It was great seeing them. Great talking to them. Great being in person with them. I'm sad to think that maybe... That might be my last in-person conversation I'm releasing for a while. Hopefully not. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Stay healthy out there. Stay sane. Stay safe. And on Friday, um, Friday I'll tell you all about my trip to, uh, to, uh, to Vegas because that's where I'm going. <laughs> all right. Have a great week, whatever it is you're doing. Check out the ghost stories by the, by the Whitmore Sisters. Go to thewhitmoresisters.com and uh, let's get down.
Six calculation, line up in formation. A certain swagger comes to mind. Careful. The 